What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, guys. And then today, guys, I want to talk some Black Myth Wukong. This game right here, guys. This game right here. But before I get into that, guys, let's get a shout out from today's video sponsor. Welcome to Trust Dice, your gateway to top notch crypto casino action and unbeatable sports betting. Trust Dice is one of the largest crypto casinos and sports books with a global user base of over 100 countries. Check out the incredible odds we have for upcoming esports events. Don't forget, we also offer popular in-house games like Dice and Crash for a variety of gaming thrills. Trust Dice isn't just about gaming, it's about creating unforgettable betting experiences. With stellar reviews and unbeatable odds, it's time to place your bet where it counts. Check the description for direct links to the esports betting section. Guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you don't miss a single upload. Man, this game, man. So, I got into Souls-like games back in maybe three years ago. I don't know. Whenever Elden Ring came out. And then I have gone on a rampage ever since. It is my AKA Strange Addiction, if you will. And I know some people might say, DM, this is really not a Souls-like game. It, it is Souls-like. It is souls like you die, you get save points. Only difference is you're not losing the stuff that you gain when you die. Be that as it may. All right. Black Myth Wukong is so much fun. And what drew me to this game was because of its background. If you are a Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball is based off of Journey to the West. And playing Black Myth Wukong, there's so many elements that you see that Dragon Ball has taken. For one, Sun Wukong, the monkey, the monkey king, okay? Also, his flying nimbus, his power pole, his transformation, or the ability to transform. All of these things were taken, or rather were catalysts to inspire Akira Toyama to make Goku. And I love it. The background, the story, the mythology. This game, the story itself is very, very interesting. And I've done a video on it before. Go back and look at some of the other videos where we talked about it. But this one, this game is nice. This game is nice. And I want to say it sold over 10 million copies in like the first week. People are excited about it, and rightfully so. I find myself playing this game, and I find myself getting frustrated a little bit when I'm fighting certain enemies, but never to the point of raging, because beating these bosses, and this is really what it is. It's, it, it's weird. It's a boss run. There's bosses on every single corner. There's things to unlock. There's ways to get powerful. And, and I haven't even finished the game yet. I'm in the very last chapter of the game and the journey so far has been phenomenal to the point where, guys, you can even, you can even say that this game is going to compete for game of the year. If you have played Souls-like games, if you've played Sekiro, if you've played Neo, you know, uh, Lords of the Fallen, you know, it, it, Bloodborne, all those, you know, I don't think it's to the difficulty of like your your Bloodborns and stuff, but the game is difficult. The game is challenging. The bosses are unique for it to have so many different bosses. Uh, the boss battles are extremely unique and very fun and challenging. And, and the game gives you so many different tools to utilize that and it's so fun i mean i look up and hours have gone by you know story wise for me because i know the story i like the game even more some people who may not know the story of sun wukong and journey to the west may not know this but i implore you to research the story first and then play the game. And, and then honestly, I mean, you know, because there is storytelling elements to the game, but it doesn't go into a grave amount of detail unless you kind of go into the pause screen, read the lore and things like that, know what's going on. Be that as it may, you don't have to know those things to enjoy and have fun with the game. The game is fun on its own. I freaking love it. 
10 out of 10 for me right now. And there's rumor of DLC coming in the future. Let's just say I am stoked. If you like these types of games, if you haven't played a Souls-like game, uh, I, 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 this one would be a fun one to start with. I would say if you're a Dragon Ball fan transitioning into Souls-like games, something to hold you off until Sparking Zero comes out in a couple of weeks, this is a fun one. This is a interesting game. The combat is unique. The combat is fun. You know, putting so many hours into this game, I don't feel like it's repetitive at all because, you know, each chapter... And the game comes with its own uh, unique characters and its own unique challenges and, and mysteries and secrets and and power ups and things like that. And I've kind of gotten ahead of myself and kind of looked at some of the new games plus stuff. Yes, there's new game plus and I'm excited. I'm excited to finish the game and be able to start it again. That was one of my biggest deals is like, oh, I don't want to go through this and play all of this and unlock all these different things. And then that's it. So there is an end game to this game, plus some new game plus type stuff. Guys, this one is good. This one is good. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, you owe it to yourself to at least try this game. If you've played uh like games like Sekrio. to me it's on it's more on the level of like a Sekrio. it's not as difficult as uh dark souls and bloodborne i would say but at the same time to me those games while they are difficult and challenging they, you know the 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 reason i say it's not as difficult as those games is because you're collecting what what you would call souls in the souls like games it's called will here and you can get that back. When you don't lose that when you die. But you do go back to like your checkpoints and stuff. So that to me that's the only difference. Other than that the game is is still difficult. I mean, you know, a regular enemy can wipe you out. You tend to have more health. It's one of those deals, you know, you're not doing a tremendous amount of damage kind of deal like you never really get stronger then they want you to get if that makes sense but you still got some pretty powerful attacks some really unique attacks some some interesting secrets that are actually kind of easy to miss if you're not careful exploration is a big deal uh it pays off it, it's not a big open world game or anything like that to me it feels more along the lines think like a souls if god of war wanted to be a souls like game that is what this game is it is just as enjoyable fighting these major bosses and, and stuff like that uh you know like a god of war kind of deal but you know not as uh it, it just Mix God of War with Souls like, and th and that's what you get. That's the best way that I can put this because the lore is just as good. Uh, the boss fights, like I said, are all they're so unique. They're so unique, and there's there's some boss fights that can challenge you. I'm gonna just you know rewind this for the B roll footage. There are some boss fights in this game that will challenge you. Okay, there's some hidden bosses that will challenge you, and then there's some bosses that you know. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. You know what I'm saying? All in all, man, this is so much fun. And I highly, highly, if you are a fan of Dragon Ball, if you are a fan of Asian culture and mythology and things like that, like I said, first and foremost, go check out one of my older videos where I'm talking about the lore of this. And then go and play this game because you will not be disappointed. Well, you might be if you if you don't like getting if you don't like dying. What did, what did Four Quad say? Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. That's fine if you die because you're learning as you go. You're learning these bosses, mechanics, and things like that. The thing I like about it, you know, as far as I, like I say, difficulty. The fights are difficult, yes. But because you don't lose anything when you die, then you know what I'm saying? Like it's different than playing like Bloodborne or, or Dark Souls, you know. Heck, even I think Neo, you lose stuff from Sekiro games like that. And that's why people say, oh, it's not really a Souls-like game. Souls-like means it's like the Souls games. It's like it. There are differences. So 
Still got to try Life of Pi, though. But all in all, guys, this game is phenomenal. I implore you to check it out. I highly recommend you to check it out. I cannot wait to get home and play. I've been playing this a little bit more than college football. Guilty, guilty conscience right there. You know what I'm saying? Been playing this a little bit more than college, or mostly more than college football because I've been waiting for this game a very long time being a Dragon Ball fan. It's awesome. I love it. Highly recommend it. Try it out if you've already played it. Let me know how your experience with the game is in the comment section down below. Guys, that's all I got, man. Till next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace.